Hey, we had a great Office 365 webinar last week on advisorsforadvisors.com. The topic was organizing email in Office 365 and in Outlook, and it was targeted information for registered investment advisors on how best they can use this powerful software tool that is Office 365. And we also had some great questions from the attendees too, most of which we answered during the session, but there were two that needed a little more research to get the correct answer, the complete answer, and I wanted to do that right now. So the first question we had was about receiving inquiries from a form on a web page, and you can read the exact question here. The key thing is our web developer says they've not been able to get this to work for either this particular person, this particular advisor, or any of their other users, and they wanted this advisor wanted to know, is this even possible with Office 365? And you know, that's a great question. So let me, it, here's the symptom, right? Somebody fills out a form on your website and the web form function of that website tries to generate an email with all that information that the visitor entered and send it to you or someone in your company, right? But the email never arrives. So that's the symptom they're describing. You know, we recently had this exact same situation with one of our clients that had a WordPress website and uh, here's how we solve that. So there are two pieces to this puzzle, the send piece and the receive piece, right? So the send piece coming from the website and the receive piece uh, in Office 365. So let's talk about the send. Office 365 is set up initially so that emails that are sent from your domain, just like X, you know, if your domain like xyzcompany.com, they can only come from one place. Right? So if you have Office 365, you only want emails to come from the xyzcompany.com Office 365 account. It can come from any of the users in there, but only from that account. And that makes sense, right? Otherwise, emails could look like they come from you, but they don't actually come from you. So that's not good. So to establish this, we enter a sender policy framework or SPF record into your DNS setup. That SPF record will initially be set up so that only Office 365 can send emails from your, uh, with your name on it. But the web form on your website is not in Office 365. And if the web form tries to send an email from something like, you know, webinquiry at xyzcompany.com, the email will be recognized as coming from a server that is not Office 365 and it will be rejected. And sometimes you don't even know that it's been rejected. It just sort of disappears into some sort of black hole. It just never, never shows up. So what you have to do is you have to modify that SPF record to include the IP address or addresses of the website server. Now we're not gonna go into how to format an SPF record, but this change should allow the email from your a website to avoid the DNS related rejection. And if you don't know what any of this means, um, talk to a Microsoft partner like us or some other expert, the folks that are handling your DNS records. But that still won't necessarily get it into Office 365 because you need to address the receive side as well. And specifically, that these emails will pass through Office 365's spam filters. So let's talk about that next. So as we demonstrated in the webinar, go into the Exchange Administration Center and click on Mail Flow and Rules. Then you're gonna set up a rule to allow emails from a specific domain or IP address to bypass the spam filters. And so here's that rules wizard, which you'll recognize. And the initial rule logic is to apply this rule if the sender's domain is, and you would enter whatever that domain is, and you're gonna to have to get that from your web, uh, your web hoster. The do logic, the do the following logic, now this is, um, it's buried a bit. So you wanna select modify the message properties, and then set the spam confidence level, you can see those selections there, to bypass spam filtering. So anything that comes in uh, from this domain is going to bypass Office 365's spam filters and get delivered. And don't, again, don't forget to save, uh, save the rule down below 
and you should be good to go. Now our second question was about was about folders and rules in Outlook and uh, you can see that this person uses a lot of them and they really had they'd run into a limit on rules right and uh, I think I think she said she had 120 rules and um, she was a little frustrated by the fact that she couldn't go higher so there are two limits on rules in office on Outlook rules in office 365 uh, the maximum number of email addresses that are in a rule, and I think that's 25, um, and that doesn't seem to be the case for this questioner here, and the amount of memory that's allocated to uh, rules for a user. So the rules quota in Outlook is probably set up as either 32 or 64 kilobytes as a default. All right, but there, in Office 365, the rules quota can be set up to 256 kilobytes, which could either be four or eight times uh, what most users probably have right now. That change needs to be made in Exchange via PowerShell, which is a command language used by partners like us to manage functions that can't be reached via the administration center. So if you have this situation, you're going to have to call in some expert help uh, unless you're familiar with Exchange PowerShell. So we cover items like this on every Office 365 Advisors for Advisors webinar. And our topics are focused, as I mentioned, on helping investment advisors get the most out of this very powerful piece of software, Office 365, that can really transform your business. Our next session, our next paid session in the subscription series is on March 18th, and we're going to go over a lot of the sharing options uh, in Office 365. And on March 13th, there's a free introduction to the series. It goes over some of the basics about Office 365 so you can understand what the program's like and how it works. Hope you enjoy it. Hope to see you on a future session. Thanks.